six members. Well, let's turn now to Edo State, where 17 political parties are battle ready for September 21 off cycle governorship election. And that's the message coming from INEC. In a statement signed by National Commissioner and Chairman of Information and Voter Education, um, INEC, Sam Olumeko. He said the 17 parties are the ones that met the deadline for submission of names of elected candidates for the election. Submission and upload of names of nominated candidates for the election closed by 6 p.m. on Sunday, 24th of March, while the commission is expected to publish the names of these candidates um, on the 30th of March. One of the 17 parties is the Young Progressives Party, and I'm joined on the show by its candidate in the forthcoming governorship election in Edo State, Paul Okungboa, is a 40-year-old school proprietor and serial entrepreneur who wants to be a State governor. Mr. Okungboa, welcome to the program. Thank you very much for having me. I used to know you as lead facilitator at um, Gorilla Brains, right? A university tutorial outfit in Benin those days, and then you were going to come on local television to discuss national issues. At what point did you become a politician? At the point I got tired of making comments, lamentations, with the expectation that those who are saddled with leadership position would do the needful. So when it got, uh, when our complaint and lamentations got filled to the brim, it became a reality that the best way to fix a house is to get into the house. So we had to get into the political space to see what we can do. Let's talk about the, what I call the audacity to run and, you know, what your chances are among the political heavyweights. The PDP candidate has the support of incumbency at the state level. The APC candidate has the support of the ruling party. And then there's also the Labour Party that won the presidential election in your state last year. I doubt if yeah. YPP has won any elective position in Edo State. What's your motivation for running? Well, you have said just now the reality on ground, which is the the different um, political arsenals that these um, political parties have as their impetus. But you see, what we have as our impetus is the people. In the last election, Labour Party did not win the election because it was Labour Party. It was the people that won the election. And i like to say once more that those described obedience are not ascribed to any political party. This set of Nigerians or this set of Edolites are people who yearn for anything or any person that is making a, the, the necessary approach to savage the lots of the sufferings of the people. So if you can appeal to this base, if you can do your presentation to this base, and if this base have come to adopt your presentation, then it ultimately becomes the people versus INEC. So th this, this base you're talking about actually voted for a particular personality in the person of Peter Obi. Um, so there's Aswa yeah. Igodalo, who's a renowned businessman and corporate lawyer. Uh, with the APC, there's Monday Okwebolo, who is a sitting senator. And then Olumide Akpata is former president of the Nigeria Bar Association. You, you think you're better than these in individuals? Uh, the language better is ambiguous, but what I'd like to say to you, which is, of course, what I've always said, is that the titled men you have mentioned just now are typically the Nigerian political class or the elite class who do nothing, who have proven over time that their policy programs does not necessarily bring succor to the ordinary man or the ordinary people, so to speak. These plutocrats... These big names you have mentioned just now, if you do a spread of Nigeria's problem, if we put it on the table spread, these big names cannot be exempted from the troubles that we face that has, okay, that has made life quite a burden for the larger majority. Our hope is for the first time we want to make, we want to create a campaign that is issue based because I've been issue. All you hear is your father is this, you are this, this one stole money, that one stole money. Nobody, none of this political class are actually giving a clear-cut agenda in a manifesto that is not enraptured with beautiful English, but 
a manifesto that the people can hear you speak about, and then they can phantom within their thought process that these things that are said just now, if driven by government policies, can actually make life better. And this is, most of all, our joy, that we carry the natural requisite skill to communicate our agenda with the people. The people will make the decision eventually. If they want a continuation of the names that are larger than them, same names that have plundered them into hardship, then it's just all good. But if the people listen to a common man's mandate, such as the one that we have, we have, we have, we have crafted to the people, and I believe the time has come where the common man begins to look inwards. You know, looking inwards now means sit down, listen, take a thorough listening to what these people are saying, and then right. factor within your. Your, your, your cerebral cortex, what, which of these things can be implemented by government policy? Ours is just a people-oriented program. So it sounds like you're saying, or oh, like these other three individuals, you're not a part of the establishment. But has it always been no, that not. bad in a dose state? Because, you know, you're, you're a school owner, you own a restaurant, a lounge. I mean, I have a long list of your businesses here. You are an employer of over 430 staff members uh, whom you say are currently earning more than the minimum wage. Um, these other individuals you've talked about who have been in government must have created an enabling environment for your businesses to thrive. Do you agree? No, I do not agree, Mr. Nifemi. As a matter of truth, the ruling party in my state has necessarily they, they plundered businesses and SMEs with taxes, multiple taxation and senseless taxes. And I have not seen a government that has direct an intentional policy to thriving business owners who have created employment for other persons as a way of buffering. When we got through what we went through in the course of the 2019 uh, Corona and the post Corona, ask. Has any government, was the government of the day ever intentional to ask business owners for a forum or were there government grants that were given as buffers to resuscitate businesses that were, that were collapsed occasioned by, by the corona shutdown? No. There is no way I will buy into it that this part promoted any policy that has made life comfortable for people like us to do business. What we are doing is the, 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 the desire to get results. There is a matching design on how to get results. And regardless of what government has instituted before us, we are not deterred. We kept pushing. We kept moving. The banking institutions have low facilities that are cut throat. But we have been moving with these things. We have been patching and moving with it. Nobody cares that we'll be surviving. That's for the state government in whom, in which I can also, I can also now finger the uh, AQP, the, the candidate who has said he uh, was chairman economic team for the past seven years. If you're chairman economic team for the past seven years, then you should have, you should have really accentuated policies where businesses in All the right. post-corona era will say today, but you know, for a those state government would have been in complete shambles. Or is All it right. the one who is a senator? I want to hear his bill. The bill he has moved in the upper chambers. The bill that has made life better today. I want to hear the bill he has moved. I'm not interested in the uh, uh, rubber of rice he has shared in his constituency. That is bad politics. All right. Is Mr. Kubo, we, we, the hungry men and women to them. We're going to hear from them when their um, campaign begins, and I'm sure that they too, you know, would have a long list of what they have done for their people. But I'm sure you are following, uh, based on what you have said, it sounds like you're saying you have excelled, you know, irrespective of the challenges, you know, that um, have happened in the past years. But let's talk about some politics here. I'm sure you're following the growing advocacy for Edo Centra to produce the next state governor in Edo. All the yes. big parties yes. seem to have complied. Uh, but you are from Edo South. You don't think ASAN should have it this time? Mr. Nifemi, I'm glad you asked that question. You see, when the upper class want to keep maintaining their wealth stream, it is always the Talakawas, the ordinary men, that they use in perpetuating division, either in the guise of tribalism or in the guise of religion. Our biggest woe at the national level is that competent men and women who, by, 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 by divinity, do not come from tribes or major languages, have been completely ostracized. You know, it is sad that it will take 
a a Musa Abdullah Abdullah to run for president and then leverage on the entire northern spread when he is not as competent as Christopher somewhere in the obscurity of Delta State or in Edo State. As far as Edo politics is concerned, as far as the constitution of Nigeria is concerned, which does not in any way recognize such sectional arrangement, I, 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 I want to at some point beg the upper class. The attempts to divide us is not going to work. But Mr. Akubawa, concern here, I'll, Mr. allow me to jump in quickly. The argument has been that there is a competent person in every region of the country. So in Edo, for instance, they say Edo South yes. has had 16 years to produce the governor, followed by Edo North with eight years. The Edo Central produced the governor for only one year and seven months. And they're saying it's only fair if it returns there this time. My question really is, do you agree that the Asian people in this case have been grossly marginalized? Mr. Nifemi, are we, at the end of it all, we are all Edo's. That's the single denominator here. And very importantly, when the Asians had a chance, like you said, they, they accentuated the a candidature in, in the person of Professor Osarimba Osumbo. But Anadam Sosupole was in the opposition party. And of course, nobody had to tell him is a turn of this or turn of that. Anadam Sosupole was more popular then. And the people went with Anadam Sosupole. And their candidate as a then robbed the mandate and tribunal return the mandate how is that the fault of my generation was my generation there those of us who have become victims of maladministration i i, I were we there can we say today satisfactorily that the times you have mentioned that life is better for an average adult child or an adult man adult woman we were not there it was not our making and of course we will not pay the price of what we did not orchestrate if they had if there was a popular candidate more popular than adam Sosomole. I believe we will not be having this argument. So the argument that it was our tone, you, you, you've always had tones. As you speak, it is still your tone. Do not tribally try to relegate or victimize or antagonize other tribes. Go and sell your candidature to the people. Good enough. You currently now have your candidates occupying the first two political parties in the state. states. They go and put that to the test. They should stop saying it's our tone. I'm glad they are there on the ballot. Let Edo Centra produce a governor that an Igbo man, an Aousa man, a Yoruba man, an Echo man, an Isuto man, an Akwa Igbo man, who has staked others in Edo State policies and policy. Some of these people have lived their entire lives here. Those people were born here. You cannot begin to accentuate a candidature on the basis of tone by tone. It must be what the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria addressed earlier. There is no such arrangement. All right. We will all go to the people and let the people make the choice. You must not control the choice of the people on the basis of a tribal consanguinity. That is for me an offense to assume that it is the tone of a particular tribe. All it right. has always been the tone of everybody. And as a matter of truth, Mr. Nifemi, all through the times you have mentioned, there have been aspirants from the Asian, Asian extraction. The likes of uh, uh, the popular rice man, Kenima Sagon, has been a serial uh, uh, aspirant. Why have the Asian Central not queued up behind him? Mm -hmm. There is no election he has not uh, indicated interest or on. So essentially what you are saying is that every other uh, tribe who have legitimate claim should step down because you want an unrivaled uh, political I process. That is not how we grow, my, my brother. I hear you clearly, and um, you know, time will tell if the majority of Edo people share your sentiment and um, would um, follow the most competent. And I think that's also. I assure you, Edo people are only after one thing the yes. single denominator, which is our collective suffering. Absolutely. This is an ordinary mass mandate. I am not a plutocrat or, or one of the aristocrats. I do not have, I don't even come close to who they are in personality and in wealth. But you see, let's go and share our ideas and visions. All right. Let the people rally around our ideas and visions. That's what we're asking. And that's what INEC is asking to an issue based campaign. We hope to see that in the coming yes. days. But uh, if we, we can, are because of time, Mr. Kumboa, let us touch on the impeachment attempt you know, um, the ongoing process to impeach the deputy governor. Um, the chief judge of the state has now constituted a seven-man panel uh, to investigate the allegations. By the way, the justice name is Okungbo. Are you in any way related? 
No, I'm not. All right, interesting. <laughs> so, you know, um, what do you think is happening here? Are we going to see a deputy governor impeached for a first time in the do Mr. in a long time? Mr. Nifemi, I do not have the closure to answer as to whether or not there will be an impeached deputy governor in Edo. But what I know is that for the past 14, 15 years, Edo has faced huge underdevelopment because of the infighting be between these political friends. At first, they are all friends. When Adam Soshomole was being introduced by Lucky Binejo, they were all friends. And he said, I'm what I mean. They were all friends. And then Edo's resources and wealth is always the, uh, at the receiving end when their fights start because they will do settlements every, every now and then. And after which Adam Soshomole, in his own political wisdom, brought in his friend and they ended up fighting with Edo money, fighting usually for years with Edo money. A station where today they will remove the roof of the Asma Assembly and say it needs to renovation. Then, all of a sudden, the deputy governor, who is in his right to contest the election, there is no place in the constitution that says he is not qualified. If he is not qualified, that would be the decision of INEC. Mm. But you see, because you, you, you the know, governor has an intention we try to hegemony. We really try to avoid weighty allegations that we cannot prove on the show, you know, especially when these other parties are not present to defend themselves. Um, but my question really is, would be, and if you can, in a minute, how much impact do you think this is having currently on governance in Edo State? The office of the deputy governor under this administration for us, for me, has been quite ceremonial for a long time. So whatever the governor is doing, he's still doing it. I don't okay. think governance in any way has You don't think it changed anything? All right. Oh, yes, it, did, it, did, it didn't change anything. We have about two more minutes to go. I, I just want to have your take on this. We have um, reported increased fatalities from court clashes in Edo State in the past months. It, it's been one story of killing to another, especially late last year. Um, you know, um, as recent as Christmas Eve, uh, a journalist and three others were reportedly killed by cultists. Um, if you become governor, or let me ask you indirectly, what do you think the government should be doing differently to resolve what has happened over and over again in Edo State? Uh, Mr. Mifel, I want to quickly quote, uh, quote an administrator in Nigeria who said that when insurgents persist beyond 24 hours, you know there are people behind there, and those poor Muslim governments. What is it for me? My understanding has been that I have no problem with brotherhood, but I have a problem with courtism which has cascaded into senseless killings and witch hunting. But you see, these court groups have patrons, they have supporters. And most of these patrons use them during an electionary period. And after which, the, the chunk size who are often left uncompensated, they, they keep the oppressive tendencies up. And the, the court killing in Edo, there is no way the chief executive officer of Edo State, which is the governor of Edo State, cannot tell me that if he means to settle the issues of court confraternal clashes that cascade into killing. If you cannot settle that, if you cannot settle because these people are not faceless, they are not faceless. If you cannot settle that, then I mean, maybe one way or another, there are a, there are a political class or, the, or those who, who use them for whatever it is they use them for. That's, of course, All right. uh, giving a long stay mm -hmm. to the existence of this senseless killing. Otherwise, right. it should have long been abolished. We're going to continue this conversation um, subsequently. I've been speaking with Paul Okungboa, who is the YPP governorship candidate in that dose. We wish you all the best, and thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank That's you. our show today, everyone. You can watch it again at midnight and at 6 a.m. tomorrow. I am Nifemi Ogun Toye.